Um, next, we've got Ken Barris, award-winning author and novelist, um, and an old friend of Hendrix. Uh, I'm not going away, don't worry. <laughs> Benny, thank you for being shorter than Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Brothers and sisters, moment that I get my prachtige to open with a script lesson. But it unfortunately my begeert om aan die begin van die program te plaas. Maar nie, ek gaan nie aanstoot neem nie. Begrifnis is alles. I turn to the book of Job, chapter one, verse eight. You'll have to bear with me; it's quite long, but it's a dream narrative. It goes straight to the point. And the Lord said unto Satan. Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord, and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. <coughs> so Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they had slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burnt up the sheep, and the servants have consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. <coughs> While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and their daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house. And it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And only I am escaped alone to tell thee. So... <coughs> I learned from Wikipedia it's an 8,000 year old document, but I think it's going into the same space <coughs> on me. To, to, question, to question the very fundamentals of being, and if you construct that psychologically, you know, Satan and God are out there, but of course, um, they're qualities of the self. Uh, so the, the self interrogates the principles of light and darkness, and everything is taken away from Job and uh, well you'd have to read the book yourself to get the ending but I think <laughs> Hendrik is is going into that same space now he's for, for Hendrik it is mind or intelligence or consciousness for Job it is you know the Lord out there and Satan out there which are the dualities he criticizes um, I think that in Henny's book in reading Henny's book I found it a tough read and a very interesting and a fascinating read and there were two problems, no, let me say two challenges that, that came up for me. I, I, I am an argumentative person and I wanted to argue. And the one thing was about, let's say, uh, how do you think? And the other argument was who you are. As to the how do you think part, and he has a very broad perspective and he, he pulls together things um, that I'm, I, I'm not sure are connected. Maybe because I can't see the connections. In fact, I had a huge fight with him when I visited him in Suvrak about the very thing. And um, so, and then I saw them later in the book. I, I, I was fascinated. But then <coughs> uh, there's the bit scholar Sarah Nuttall, and she she talks about the concept of entanglement. And she says entanglement is an idea which signals largely unexplored terrains of mutuality, wrought from a common temporality of past present and future. One which points away from a time of resistance towards a more ambivalent moment in which the time of potential, both latent and actively surfacing in South Africa, exists in complex tandem with new kinds of closure and opposition. And Eva Hunter, talking about that, 
and this brings it down more specifically to Hendrik's book, says, from writers and readers, the idea of entanglement demands strenuously responsive eyes to see, ears to hear, courage to confront unpleasant truths, and the imaginative exploration of the nuances of relationships relations between characters, fictional and actual, within the text, as well as between the reader and the text. And I, I think this is very much what Enter is about. And you will see that Henry does sometimes go into the fictional, uh, as he comments in one of his footnotes. The other argument I had with the book, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> had a cold last week, I haven't quite got over it. <coughs> the other argument I have with the book is the who you are part. And I think, uh, as Hendrik himself has said in the book, you really don't write from the head. You, or you, you don't be from the head. You be who you are. Who is your personality? Who are you? What are you? And I think that, I think I, I, the word temperament pops into my mind, and I feel I'm more optimistic than Hendrik. But hold with that thought. <laughs> but hold with that thought. I'll come back. You lie. <laughs> I'm amazed. I'm amazed you, you guys have noticed this as well. <laughs> um, now, here's an interesting thing. On page 58, Hendrik says, he's talking about us. A species whose very existence is defined in terms of separation has no way to reconnect with the world in itself because of the seas being what it is. This is what I need to understand that I am. This is why I need to understand that I am the nature of the problem. Now, are we a species that is designed to be separate? Because if I look around here, this is a community. And, and uh, I don't know if the, the email went to everyone, but Hendrik sent out an email saying, you know, um, he would like some snacks, he would like some of this, he'd like some wine, he'd like some people to talk, and he trusts on so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so to do it. Yeah. That's community. And we're not separate, we're here, we're together. So, that is my one thought. And then my other thought is I was reading this part on page 15, a bit late at night, and I read this. Uh, yes, page 15. He's talking about his father's reaction. Was it Um Darby, his uncle? Your uncle. Um Darby's suicide, and his father feels very responsible for it. Um, a sense of responsibility that in my father's case was most likely brought home to him by Darby's suicide while, he, while my father and his new wife were farming and living off the grid with their newborn son. So I thought, no, that's wrong. It's his son who's, and his wife and newborn child are living off the grid in Zilbra. <laughs> and then I had to read it again and I worked it out. So that's transgenerational something. It, it's a move from... Um, what is that? To go into the wilderness off grid, that's creativity, that's adventure, that's life. Uh, and I think there's so much of that in Um Hendrik over there. Uh, so Henny, I think you also have to look at the heart of lightness as well as the heart of darkness. <laughs> that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ken.